Hey, Larry. Are you? Welcome. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. I'm stoked to kick off between sets with Larry, with you. And um, it's very exciting, man. This is something that it couldn't be a more perfect fit, you know, in terms of like inspiration and what you do. It's something I really am looking forward to hearing and seeing some of your imagery. Yeah, no, I'm excited. This is such a cool platform. And the fact is that you're not limited to just photographers, right? So with all of this technology, and unfortunately, during these times, it's nice to be able to do this with a lot of people that have, you know, between time between sets, right? So right now we yes. have time, unfortunately, between our sets, because normally you and I would actually be traveling the world right now, following racing oh. for me and then for you you'd be following surfing right absolutely and you know the world is changing constantly with everything going on and the virus has really done a, a hard reset so for us where travel is our main source of income for these commercial shoots and jobs and and photo shoots in these exotic locations it's very good to take that reset and change and find ourselves here uh, a lot of people are saying that they can't hear the audio. All you have to do is you go up to that settings uh, cog, right? And then you switch which audio, where the audio is coming out of on your desktop. Uh, but yeah, uh, where, where, sorry, what were you saying? No, I, no, no, no. I was, I was just talking about it. I mean, yesterday I saw that you were shooting with Jay Leno in his garage, which is just insane. Yeah. I mean, that's not something everyone gets to do. And you, you, yeah, tell, you know, the it. crazy yeah. thing is I, I really have to pinch myself every day. I'm sure it's the same way with you. With you, you get to shoot with epic athletes, um, epic surfers. I mean, you've shot with Michael Phelps, right? Like, yeah. he's like pretty much the greatest athlete in the world, you know, in terms of gold yeah. medals. Absolutely. And the fact that you could shoot with him, like, really, really up close and personal and uh, yeah. You can kind of tell the story um, through your lens. It, it's kind of interesting because yeah. a lot of these guys, if you guys are fans of Zach, you'll see his imagery. And then when I see his imagery, it completely mm -hmm. reminds me of how I shoot. Like a lot of wide <laughs> open, a lot of high speed mm -hmm. shutter, you know, freezing the action or telling the story of motion. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, shooting with Jay is always fun. He's yeah. the best car guy and he's really, really <sighs> open to sharing his collection. And, you know, that's what, one of the reasons why we love working with him because mm -hmm. he has the craziest car collection, you know, and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't get things that other people like. He gets things that he yeah. likes and he yeah. loves sharing it and kind of single-handedly, I feel like he is elevating car culture as a whole. Well, I, I mean, I saw the video of you when you went there and you got blindfolded. You got to touch the different vehicles and try to figure out what cars were actually under the blindfold, you know? Yeah. So that was a pretty cool aspect to be so close with Jay and do that. I mean, it's not every day. What were you doing yesterday shooting with Jay? Can you just so, kind of share that or is that- Yeah, really yeah, we could, we could share that. So um, Jay, unfortunately right now, he can't do stand-up shows and he can't do live appearances, obviously, you know, for, with these times. And on top of that, his NBC show is kind of slowing down. He's basically filming a lot of this stuff legit. He's filming it on his own iPhone it, for his YouTube channel. Uh, one of the things that we're helping with right now, we're actually helping him capture content for social, for uh, the detail product line. So Jay doesn't really endorse that many products. Uh, so in terms of income and in terms of products that he's working on, he's actually really uh, focusing a lot on his own product line, which is uh, wow. detailing products and things that you can actually do use to restore the cars. So that's kind of his mantra, right? He buys these cars, potentially yeah. they haven't run sometimes for 50 years, if you can imagine, and they're just rotting and they're just, like this mass of metal that you really have to work to kind of bring back. And then, so he actually came out with his own line of products to kind of help massage it and not so much like destroy it, but actually bring back potentially what originally was there, you know? So mm -hmm. 
Uh, he does all of this stuff. Everything is local in Southern California. So that's kind of why okay. we're helping him recently to kind of just create more gotcha. content. Yeah. So I had uh, a very, it's very, very complimentary. Yeah. I had to a, his, his, what he's fashion. Yeah. Yeah. I had a very, uh, weird moment. And I think, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you would want us to share this, but yesterday I, hey, I share that with yeah, weird. I mic'd him up. That's right? what we're here for. I mic'd him up yeah. and because he was actually going to talk about some of the product on camera. And then the mic basically uh, fell through his overalls. You know, he loves wearing overalls and it came out of his uh, uh, pants, right? So it like came out next to his shoes. And then he's like, no worries, just clip it, uh, clip the mic onto my shoe, right? I'm like, uh, there's no clip. He's like, don't worry, just stuff it in my sock. So legitimately uh, yesterday, I stuffed a microphone <laughs> into it. Jay Leno's sock <laughs> yesterday. It was, uh, I, I would have to that say, a first. I would have to say, yeah, that that's definitely a first for me. I never thought I would have to do that ever in my life. <laughs> Damn, dude. That's, I mean, that's the fun. And I think with photography and you can attest to this, it's like, that's what makes these amazing story. The, the stories behind the imagery is what makes me love my photo. I'm so, I'm asked so many times, what's your favorite image? And I feel like it, it is always changing, but it's also what it took to get that photo to me, that backstory, that thing. So I think those are kind of like aspects. And I, I'd like to just start with your slideshow, well, your, your key. Yeah, well, before we get onto that, yeah. I just want to tell you yep. about your favorite image or my favorite image of yours. Uh, oh, okay. for, for, you, for you guys uh, who are listening, you guys may not know, Zach has a, a National Geographic cover, which I am so jealous of, which I'm never going to be a part of because unfortunately with cars, most of the time. Never say never. Yeah, well, with never cars, say never with I, what you have. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really uh, fit with the whole National Geographic brand. But yeah, legitimately, Nat Geo, your, your, that image. Can you pull Thank that you. image up by any chance? It's the one where, where they're you. surfing through the tube and it's all trash. I, I'll get John to cue that up if we can um, a little bit later on the thing. I don't think we have it just readily available right now, but absolutely. I mean, that is a special moment. And I think to me too, not only the image, how impactful it is for, you know, something I love so much, the ocean for sustainability. It, it was something that the backstory to that, I don't know if I've shared with you, it was shot nine years ago. Oh my and God. And it was a trip where it almost didn't happen. We missed the first plane. And instead of flying from Hawaii to Taiwan, I went Hawaii to LA to Taiwan to Jakarta, got in a car, got into a boat and got two hours of good waves. Right. And it's like those stories in itself would make it so special. Yeah. And then to be able to create that image was just something that um, was Felt really good. So that's kind of the thing, guys. Uh, everyone listening, uh, yeah. two two things for everyone that's listening. Keep asking the questions. We'll actually yeah. compile them, and we're actually going to go yeah. through them after Zach and I are done. You know, doing our talking head romance over here. Uh, <laughs> the second thing is, I love that you kind of brought up uh, all of the pretty much everything that, or the some of the things that you had to deal with just to get that one image. Yeah. Two hours of waves. <laughs> Um, and I, maybe Canon's going to hate me for saying this, uh, but you know what? It's nice to have the best cameras in the world to capture it, but getting to that point, getting there in front of the cool action, you traveled 24 hours straight, maybe longer, oh, right? Two, two days straight just to get there for a two hour window. And then not to mention paddling out, whatever, potentially you only had one or two minutes of shooting time, if that, right? Yeah. To capture yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, it, collectively total, absolutely. And that that's the thing, it, it's that, that journey that makes it so special. It is that, I mean, to be able to create the image that to this day is still creating change and will continue to do, it's something, it's one of my most, you know, it's a favorite image, but also just something that just, created like that type of sustainability movement that can really push and create that change. Yeah. And yeah. that kind of goes to the, um, what I always say for car photographers, uh, the, the, the thing that people always often forget with car photography is there's a owner or driver behind the car, right? Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. 
to, to kind of do that homework, even if you see some person on the street and they have their car and you love it and you want to yeah. photograph it, it just starts with building the, that rapport, you know, even starting with, yeah. hey, I like your car. And then the conversation yeah. <laughs> goes on from there. And then guess what? You guys are best friends. You know, and then you're <laughs> yeah. you're shooting their car, and then they say, "Hey, my friend has this car. You might want to be interested yeah. in shooting it." And it's right. so much right. like that that hobby aspect of it, and that aspect yeah. of networking and making friends. And you know, it can't always just be about money. It's so much of it no. is about being able to get this image. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like the whole cover aspect of it. If we were, I, I mean, chasing... Larry, that's a, yeah, that's it's a very personal thing, almost a car. I mean, it's an extension of the person, the owner. I mean, how did you get into photographing cars, and how did you come to be? I mean, you've shot anyone and everyone in every vehicle. I know you do a lot with Ken Block. Um, I know you do anything and everything car related, commercial work, but as well as the lifestyle. How did you? come to be this how did you come into the car space in the automotive world the yeah the the easy answer is that i fell in love with cars first um, okay it, it's just one of those things right like you grew up in hawaii and yeah. naturally you gravitate towards uh outdoors sports especially mm -hmm. with surfing it's just a natural thing for you to get into that right mm -hmm. and it, it's almost yeah. weird if you're in hawaii and you don't you're not into surfing or yeah. you're you're not into anything related to the ocean. Um, yeah. With me, it's the same thing. Growing up in Southern California, this is ground zero for car culture. So many things in the car world started here, you know, drag racing, land speed racing, um, low riders, just so many things started yeah. here. In fact, even recent car culture, like drifting, the house of drift is here in LA and I'm not that wow. far away from it. You know, the point is that Mm -hmm. For some reason, just the culture, I think uh, part of it is just the landscape. You know, there's so many yeah. roads. There's yeah, so absolutely. Many, there's so many good driving roads. And the weather is great to drive your car pretty much all year long. I feel so bad for my East Coast friends or my Midwest friends <laughs> where they're like, all right, my cars are in storage. You know, like mm -hmm. I got to yeah. cover it with plastic. And, and you know, I can't drive right. this um, one off or this classic car for however many months. And then, you know, I can't yeah. wait for the time when I can actually pull them out again. That's not the mm. case in Southern California. And also with racing culture here, it just doesn't stop. It's all year round. You know, I can shoot racing mm -hmm. in December and then in January, as soon as the holidays are after or are over, I can start shooting racing again. It's the craziest thing. Gee, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's truly, you are in the capital, so to say, and that, I mean, yeah. you're absolutely right. Growing up in Hawaii, I'm surrounded by the ocean. Mm -hmm. I'm shooting what I love in that way. And your culture is automotive. It is at cars and just being surrounded. I love that you shoot every aspect of it. Going through your slideshows yesterday when you sent it to me, I was just like blown away by the All variety right, so and diversity of it. And it's just insane this dude. is this is the kind of exclusivity that i kind of want to bring to this and i feel like all of your presenters yeah. should bring this deck mm -hmm. is something that i would actually send to somebody potentially if i would want mm -hmm. their business you mm -hmm. know but the difference okay. is this is more geared towards uh an off-road photography mm -hmm. job so it could be potentially okay. for hey i'm bidding on uh working for some truck company or some UTV okay. or power sports or whatever. I just kind of would want to show them a little bit of the range of what I can shoot when it's just not okay. on pavement. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Between Sets. Make sure to like and subscribe to be tuned in on all future episodes. Thank you.